Welcome to our future home. In case you didn't know, we have just bought four cabañas and around 3.2 hectares of land in Cantabria, the north of Spain. Today, we're gonna give you a tour around and also tell you a little bit about our plans and goals for the place. This first field contains one cabaña and the road access to the property as well as the electricity line. We need to finish off the, the road access still because it's not in great condition, but at least it's already laid out for us, which is very handy. We don't really know what we will do with this field because we're a bit worried about the amount of water it seems to have. There, there are little canals going down all over the place. Every time you see these plants, which are called juncos in Spanish, that means that there's a lot of water in the ground. And this finca, so this first plot, has a lot of it. One day we will have to figure out how to channel it properly and contain it to only little parts so that it's not all soggy and wet. <laughs> Ideally, we would have done the tour when we just got it because it was all overgrown and wild, but we just couldn't help ourselves. So we started doing works on it straight away. So you will see that it's quite cleaned up in some spots. That does make it a bit uglier. <laughs> it has to get worse before it gets better. We couldn't help ourselves. We have been working for like four or five weeks already. Sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's fun though. This is the first cabaña and it's the one that has been used to keep cows for the longest time. It was actually occupied until a couple of weeks ago. So it's very dirty still. It's a good size. It has the road access right to it. We don't know if this will be one of the first ones we renovate. Perhaps it's the easiest. It's not our favorite, but perhaps it's the easiest. So we still have to think about that. I don't know what to say. If you want to see the poop, here is the poop. <laughs> This is the very fancy entrance to the rest of our property. Here is the back of cabaña number two and a field that I think we're going to use to plant our veggies and some fruit trees because it's very well protected by both sides. We've already started cleaning it up so it doesn't look as pretty but it is a nice space. Ooh, it's getting hot already. Come on. One of the first things we've done is get rid of a lot of thorn bushes that were really overtaking the property. This wall, for example, was covered completely and it's very damaging to the cabaña. So we had to do a lot of cutting and pulling. You know, it was a painful and long process, but <laughs> we've managed. It will be a constant fight though, they're already coming back, but slowly by slowly. Slowly by slowly. This is the front of the second cabana, which also happens to be the smallest one in our property. It's also the only one that has an issue with its stone walls, but it allows us to show you how these cabañas are actually made. So if you look here, there is the outer layer of stone and then there's another inner layer of stone. The walls are around 70 centimeters deep and in between the stone there is mud. Now the cabaña is held up only by the inner wall and having this exposed is actually quite tricky because the water will get in very easily and break down the building in record time. So we have to fix this as soon as possible. It's just a bit daunting because <laughs> we don't know how to build with stone and the stones are pretty big so I don't know how we're going to figure this out but we have to soon. Okay. 
Okay, so the four buildings that we find on our property are called Cabañas Pasiegas, which is a traditional architecture style of this area in Cantabria. They're fully stone huts on the outside, including the roof. It's made of stone slates. And on the inside, they have oak beams and floors. The downstairs part was always for the cattle and the upstairs part was for living. Families actually were nomadic here in this area and they always had some cabañas upper in the mountains and then some cabañas down in the valley. The ones in the valleys were for winter and the ones up in the mountains were for summer. The cabañas in these valleys are fully protected. They're considered a cultural heritage site and therefore their renovation is quite complicated and bureaucratic. This is the third cabaña and probably the one that has the best views but not as much sun because it is blocked on the south side by two really big trees but we really like it, it's a really pretty one and probably the one we will start renovating first we're still thinking about it but I think it makes sense so let's go around and see the views first before we take you inside This field all has really nice views and it goes all around. The property is, is quite large actually. We just really see ourselves here sitting out, looking over. It's beautiful. Careful with the poops. Don't step on any. This field is a minefield. Allergy intermission. <laughs> Imagine this cabana with a big glass window overlooking the beautiful views. It'll be so nice to sit in there and look out. This is the first floor of the cabana and they are all set up in the same way. There's a little room, 10, 12 square meters, where they actually lift. There is normally a bed and a small cooking area. And then behind, in the rear, is where all the hay went. I get the floor. It's not in excellent condition. No, we have a leak here. Yeah. Where my foot is. And there as well. We'll try to reuse as much of the floorboards as possible, although many are in really bad state. They're really good oak floorboards, so hopefully we can do something with it. To restore them. Ali's probably gonna have some furniture. Yeah, I wanna make some tables. Watch your step, huh? because I've fallen through already. <laughs> it's a bit tricky, yes. This one is emptied out already, so there's a little bit of hay in the back. There's not much. Everything is cleaned out. This was the stuff that was left. Uh, it's not much interesting, but this barrel is really cool, no? Yeah. And I like this mil milk jar as well. Oh. There's some beautiful bottles up here. Let's go back. Mm. Really cool. Do you want to explain why the ceilings are all black? Yeah, so they char the ceilings to protect them from termites. So and that's why they're black. And that's why they're black. It's not that they are all burned. These are all oak beams, so they're really strong. These cabanas are here for years and years, like decades. And they're still in the same conditions as they were before. The only problem they have is that the stone slates move because of the wind. And when that happens, you get little holes. And the moment the water comes in, it becomes a problem. We'll show you in another cabana. And these ones haven't been taken care of for a long time. They have been empty for, for many years. Okay, do you want to show us the wool? So the last herder that lived here was a sheep herder and he left a lot of wool here. These are a couple of the bags, but the room next to here there are many more. And we have no idea what to do with them. The wool looks in okayish condition, but we have no idea if you can reuse it. We'll have to talk to someone to figure that out. Yeah, so this is the room. This is the living space. This is the living room. This is where they lived without electricity or running water. 
I still can't imagine that they live like this. There are some uh, farmers here that still live in the same way. Yeah, surprisingly, more than you think. Yeah, more than you think, and it's crazy. It's it's yeah, the space is exactly the same as this. So one bedroom, and like there's one the bed. bed, and then this was the cooking area. You can see that there's stone here on the floor. So this is where they cook. That's crazy. No windows. No light. No nothing. Yeah, and it's dark up here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we're using a very powerful yeah. light for you to be able to see. I can turn it off. This is the light from the entrance that now is open, which is the only opening in the walls. Yeah, some have a little window. But Not most these ones. These ones don't. And this is the ground floor. This is where the cows live. The cows live downstairs because they heated up the upstairs area. And also because they cannot go upstairs. And they cannot go upstairs. <laughs> the doors are tiny. They're clearly of different times. Okay. Oh, this one's especially short, no? Over the last couple of decades, the cows have been changed. The original cows that were here were very short. Yeah. So the like the older cabanas have really really low doors and really low ceilings. The newer cabanas that had different cows, they have raised the ceilings a little bit of the ground floor, and then the cabanas are a bit higher. Yeah, they upgraded to Dutch cows, which were huge. <laughs> yeah, compared to the little like they had little cows, Autocrous very small cows. cows yeah, so. so they've had to like change a lot of the structures. But this is what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, so the feeding trays on, on, the, the, on the side. These are the holes they normally brought the hay down and then the cows would have the feeders right here along the wall and would feed directly from it. Oh, some garbage. Yeah, Lovely. More garbage. <laughs> Both sides feeding trays and then this is the poop drain. Yeah. And normally a window at the end also to drain poop out, but this one doesn't happen. No, because this one goes this through way. the door yeah. yeah it's the only one we have seen so far that has that also the bottom is made of huge stone slates which we hope to restore or recover in some way yeah we're gonna make steppers out of it now we'll see <laughs> we won't show you the rest of the cabanas on the inside because they all have a similar structure not that exciting to be honest <laughs> they're all in worse state than this one so yeah. if you are thinking like oh this is, looks really bad this is the best looking <laughs> yeah. and the others are much worse on the inside they have had many more leakages over yeah. time so many of the floorboards in the other ones are just completely rotten. rotten but we're gonna renovate them fully i mean we're gonna reuse as much the materials as possible and of yeah. course the layout and the shape and the materials of the outside have to stay the same. We have to keep the, the same looks. So the facade is going to be the same and the slates are going to be similar. And of course, we're not going to use these super massive slates because they're oh, the really heavy. Yeah, they're so heavy. My arm is going to fall off if you continue talking. Okay. <laughs> continue, you can see, but you have to hold it. <laughs> okay. And then the walls will have a similar look, but we're going to change the walls to half the width so hopefully like and we'll put stone on the outside on the but inside. timber on the uh, in, a timber on the inside and then the floor as well is going to be re redone completely we have a little river running through our property and that will be our main source of water it's actually quite lovely because there's a waterfall there now there's not a lot of water we are in the beginning of summer but when it rains it really becomes powerful and it's cool to have the constant sound of water running by it goes all along this field down to the fourth cabana and this area here is a bit of a swamp <laughs> unfortunately we think there are multiple sources of water which we're going to have to figure out so that it doesn't stay like this but this type of tree loves water so we have a mini forest going on here which we don't mind we just want to keep it a bit in control so that it doesn't overgrow too much. And we want to figure out the water sources so that the swamp becomes more of a running <laughs> lake or bigger river uh, because we don't want to have mosquitoes and stuff like that. But it is very pretty to look at. Little buggers, they've grown already. Like we cut all of this three weeks ago and they're back. They're already back. It's gonna be such an eternal fight. <laughs> The 
don't mind the huge ugly piles of dried up thorn bushes we actually have multiple throughout the property that's that's all work we've done we we pulled that out the fourth cabana is a bit further away from the rest and right now not directly accessible by a car but we really like that one maybe one day that will be our home home it'll take longer to renovate but yeah it feels like a very special spot this whole mountainside that we are neighbors with is public land so we don't have any issues with people living there which is really nice and here we are the fourth cabana this is the backside it's just really beautiful it feels like it's here hidden away between trees and water and the views are really nice on the other side i see myself living here let's see if we ever manage to do that and these are the views from the fourth cabana they're less striking, but I actually, I, I really like them. And if we ever want to live here, we would have to make a road that joins to the public road through here. The, the pista, how do you say that in English? <laughs> the, <laughs> I mean, the shape is already there. <laughs> it's just not paved in any way. In Spanish, we would call this a pista. The pista is already there, but um, there's still a lot of work for, to make this actually viable. These little plants, they've grown a lot. They hurt so much and they're difficult to cut down. So now suddenly they're everywhere. This has happened in the past two weeks. <laughs> nature, nature is thriving. And look at this facade, look at how large these rocks are. Imagine doing this by hand with no machinery. I, I just can't fathom it. But also we're gonna have to take this down and put it back up again. How are we going to do this? I have no idea. But they're beautiful, like the rocks are really, really nice. Just, this is nuts. Look at this one, it's like the span of my arms. Craziness. This people. What we hope for this place is that we will eventually live here, that this will be our little sanctuary, our bubble, <laughs> our base, where we can always come back and spend the majority of our life here. Before that, of course, these buildings need a lot of work. There are huge renovations that will have to happen. And because of the regulations in the area and the protection that these yeah. huts have, it's going to take a really long time. Years, 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 years. It's a bit sad. We're a bit impatient. We want to kind of live here now. <laughs> we love it here so much but we're gonna try to find a way of living here already no next year at some point we will probably try to find a way of building a temporary home for us to be able to be here at least part of the year and start to work yeah. on the finca there are four cabanas and quite a lot of land so we have ambitious plans but we know that it's difficult to achieve them all in yeah. the short term so take this with a grain of salt this will be a long-term <laughs> project yeah don't pinpoint on, yeah. some, on this just the general upkeep of the property is already a, a lot of work. job. Huh? Yeah. We brought Warner a custom one, but maybe it's a bit too big. But now he has his own. It's gonna become like a proper local. I feel like a proper local. It's not sharpened, so. 
That's why it looks like I'm struggling more. <laughs> but what we do want is to first renovate one, to kind of get the hang of it, learn how to do all the techniques that we will have to apply here, get all the contacts of the builders, engineers, etc. And then apply that knowledge to the others. Eventually, once they're all done, what we're thinking is we'll have one as our home, then a couple as visitor cottages, because they're quite small. They won't have a lot of bedrooms inside or anything like that. I think we can do one bedroom and maybe two bedrooms if we really yeah, force it. Yeah, but the it. second bedroom will always be very small. small. So we'll have one as our home and then a couple for friends, family that want to come here and also to rent out once in a while. That would be a really nice source of income to have. And then the fourth one will be a studio, our workspace for us to both yeah. work remotely from there if we're doing something at that time. Yeah, we definitely need a remote workspace, one that separated from our house because the cabanas are very small. It's going to be like a tiny house and you want to live there. You want to come home to those places and just mm. be sane. Yeah. You will have your sewing space. Yeah, and hopefully a pottery space. We have such big <laughs> dreams. But we'll start off with one. The most important thing now is to apply for our building permits. It's a complex process because we have a river passing through our property. We first have to apply to the Water Authority of Spain. To do all the construction works, you first need to apply to the Water Authority and then you can apply for the actual building permit or yeah. planning permit and then you apply for a building permit so it's like <laughs> this triple stage and they all the, take really long yeah the application for the water authority itself is already tedious and but they then, told us it takes around eight nine months although people from the area have experienced more around a year and a half yeah. so that's crazy just to process that yeah. Then once that is done, then we have to apply to the planning permit, which is also a level of Comunidad Autónoma. Yeah, so and that's that the takes, province of Cantabria that yeah. takes care of that. And that takes around a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then we the can apply permit. for the building permits <laughs> yeah. locally in the Ayuntamiento. And that takes around three to six months. They are they're way quicker. But if you add all of that up, <laughs> it's a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> Not so taking into account all the parts of us, like, creating the paperwork no takes, true yeah. yeah no we'll have a lot of work in the yeah. meantime and we're very lucky because warner is an architect so he understands the requirements sort of <laughs> but spain is specifically complicated and has their yeah. unique system so we're gonna have to hire local architects and engineers that can help us adapt whatever plans we have and develop to yeah. the Spanish standards. That's with, with the buildings. Then we, of course, have a lot of land. One thing that's really important to us is that we want to be able to grow a lot of our own food and to create like a bit of a food forest here. But we know nothing. We're city kids. We really don't know anything. No, we've never yeah. grown anything. So that's going to be a very steep learning curve. And it's also a very particular zone. Uh, like yeah, this area mountains. gets a lot of rain. Uh, too it's much. very cloudy. <laughs> too much. Much. It's very cloudy. We are in the beginning of summer and we haven't really seen the sun properly, only a couple of days. But the funny thing is that trees and plants here grow. Thrive. Just not all of them. So we will have to learn first what how... grows and what doesn't. Yeah, and then we're gonna have to learn all the planting techniques. Already now we, we got a bit ahead of ourselves and we bought one lemon tree and we have no idea where in the property to put it because of the winds and how can we protect it the most and where will it get the right amount of water. It's it's difficult Tough. for us. We are going to have to learn a lot, but it will be really fun. The slogan here is poco a poco, which yeah. is like little, little by little. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what we have to embrace because it's going to be a process of decades yeah. until we get to a point that we're going to be satisfied and there's never going to be an end goal. It's just always going to be doing stuff. I can't wait to decorate our cabana and I know that's, that's years away. away. But like choosing the materials, we're going to make the, the cabanas fully sustainable. The building winer has that knowledge and I'm so happy you do because I also wouldn't know where to start with that. We're going to make the building materials all as environmentally friendly as possible, locally as sourced. As much as we can. We're going to really try and we're going to source tiles made in Spain and the materials from the area and we're gonna yeah. try get craftsmen like real craftsmanship for our materials so we're really excited about that process and documenting and sharing it with you but it will be really slow it's not going to be like this YouTube channels that overnight have a new place <laughs> because it's just not possible here there's nothing there 
as you can see <laughs> there's structures but that's it yeah and then the land of course is really big so part of it will be for our own use and then a big part we want to leave for first wildflowers because here all the fields are used for cows and therefore the local biodiversity is actually quite limited so we yeah. want to leave a part of the fields to grow wild for bees and butterflies and all sorts of bugs and then a part of our land is going to become a forest we're going to reforest the area these valleys used to many years ago yeah. centuries ago be all forest then they were fully cut down they say now is the most forest that they've ever seen it they yeah, used to be zero is, trees this is the most green valley like this has the, the most, most trees, trees. Yeah, yeah but yeah. before they only had one tree per cabana and it's like the tree was where people would sit in the shade and yeah. that was the only tree they had on the yeah. whole and everything finca. else they just would cut down or burn so yeah. that grass would grow for their cattle so we want to kind of bring back the autochthonous trees and leave a bit of our land for a forest what will the coming months look like for us we had always wanted to renovate our own place but our plan originally was to buy a place that was a little bit more livable yeah. <laughs> that had like the basic conditions there to move in and to start working on it and then to slowly build it out and bring you along in the process now that our plans have changed and this is our new place that's not possible we cannot move into this cabanas yeah. they're not made for our standards and we have pretty low standards <laughs> so we could never be here without electricity without running water it's just a no-go and the building permits also are way more complicated than in other areas of spain so we've had to reconsider our approach for the yeah. coming months in case you don't know this about us about five years ago we quit our jobs we sold everything we owned and we traveled for around a year and a half and it was one of the best experiences of our lives <laughs> yeah, and sure. from the moment we've stopped we've been thinking about doing it again or dreaming about doing it again so initially even though we wanted to just come and build our home because we've been waiting to have mm -hmm. our space for mm -hmm. so long now that that's not possible in the short term we've decided to start traveling again for a little bit and then see the coming months are a bit unique first we have a few things to do in Europe. We're going to do a house sit and to a wedding in Belgium. We're going to the Netherlands to see family and catch up with everyone. And then we'll come back down to Spain, hopefully come here to our land and camp and continue de-weeding and making sure that the cabanas are okay, that they're not leaking, etc. Yeah, preparing them for winter, basically. Yeah. And then in October, we're probably gonna leave Europe and start traveling for a while. We're not gonna put a set time to we're kind of going to allow ourselves to do whatever comes our way and then hopefully next year we will come back here and set up some sort of temporary structure living situation yeah. so that we can still have a base and somewhere to come back to before our home renovations can start, start. also whilst renovating we, we will need, need to we live need somewhere space. we need to come yeah. back to some place that we can take a shower and have a proper bed the coming years are very exciting we're both we're both really looking forward to what's coming ahead even though it's so unclear we don't know at all we hope you have enjoyed this little tour of our place and that our chat at the end here telling your plans gives you some clarity if you have any questions for us make sure to leave them in the in the i was going to say in the description in the comments <laughs> we hope to have you with us every step of the way bye <laughs> thanks ciao good you're feeling good yeah i'm so excited Life's good, though. Ah, oh, it's so nice to be here.